Oh, it's Monday morning, and it's time for more relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. And definitely be doing a little painting today. We'll see how the relaxing goes as the day goes on. Um, I'm here with two centaurs. There's uh, one that is close to being done. I got a lot of it done on Friday. Uh, this one needs a whole lot of touch-up on the brown because I have a spectacular amount of paint that got onto the brown from painting the other colors. I'm not quite sure how I managed to do all of that, but I will be spending some time today uh, with a little brush and my head magnifiers going around and putting touching up all of the brown and then I will be washing all of the brown with uh, smoky ink which will transform I hope this color into this really nice kind of reddish chestnutty color and that's what I'm uh, hoping to accomplish because that's how it worked on these uh, wooden dungeon tiles I mean they're not wood they're PLA plastic printed on our 3D printers back here, but they're designed to look like wood. <clears throat> anyway, this, believe it or not, has the same base color as that. It's just that after it's washed, it takes on a totally different appearance. And hopefully the horse will do the same. We'll see. At least the horse part of the centaur. And then... Um, Okay, well, that was interesting. So, and then I need to paint the body of the centaur, and I was told that I should give this a speed paint a try. Um, and that this was done on one of the other centaurs, which I can't find, so I don't know how it'll look. I've used the speed paints like once or twice with, I don't know, I'm not really good at it, but uh, that's what I'm going to be painting here. We'll be taking a little bit of a chance because the speed paint that we have, um, if you try to paint over it, it dissolves it. Okay, so it doesn't, yeah. So, um, like the eyes. I might try, we'll see how the face turns out with the speed paint, but I might try to make the eyes <laughs> like black or something like that by using a felt tip pen. We'll see how that goes. But I need to do all of this brown, a lot of brown touching up before I get to that point. And then there's another centaur. This one has a bow and arrow instead of a spear. I think I'm going to use the same... Um, combination on the armor as with this the steel and the dark aluminium I think that looks okay so the armor is pretty much going to look the same on this one but the horse I'm gonna make the horse gray and then use like a, a dark gray wash on it I think just like I use the uh, I'm going to wash this one and we'll see how that turns out and then I need to paint the, you know, the straps on the quiver and the quiver and <clears throat> you know, all this other stuff. I used a dark red on this. I think that looks pretty good. And um, I just, because they're on the same team, but they're on the same centaur team, I think I might just do the same. Like paint the bow this really dark red. Um, maybe the feathers on the arrow. The, Something similar on the quiver, maybe. I don't want to get too many colors going. Yeah, anyway, I'm um, painting centaurs today. And yeah, trying to be relaxed about it. <laughs> be easy to do that because I'm pretty sleepy. Pick it up way early this morning. <clears throat> because um, house renovations are continuing. 
seems like a never-ending thing. And they, some of them showed up pretty early. Anyway, um, yep, I shouldn't really start painting yet. You know, oftentimes I can waste time until like half an hour into this before I have to start painting. Sometimes it's just shorter, you know, but almost always 10 minutes. Anyway, get to painting early and get started on this. Because of my experience with this one, um, I'm going to paint the armor first and then the body color. I'm going to do it in a different order. I want to get this one going first and <clears throat> get the touching up that needed to be done so that that can dry before I put the watch on. Hope the music is playing. No. Yep. Okay, that's good. Not really. I don't really have much to talk about it. Yeah, I'm running out of things. I keep saying that. You will chat about the Flintstones versus the Jetsons later or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I'm getting out this tiny brush because a lot of this is um, touching up at the base of the armor where I have to have a pretty precise line. today by just listening to the music and then occasionally checking to see if I'm on camera you get to see the top of my head here as, as I wear my head magnifiers because I really need them to see up close to see far away you know it's just all of that um, aging eyes does don't focus anywhere really I think I've got like um, six inches of uh, clear vision without glasses to paint the armor on first is because <clears throat> it comes down over the edge and then gets on body color. Big spots, but 
because they are metallic, they're really shiny, so they show. <clears throat> you know, it's not going to be the quality of a display model, you know, where you would have like a real professional painter make sure that all of the lines were perfect and <clears throat> the wash came out beautifully and all of that sort of thing. It's uh, not going to be of that quality. It is going to be of the quality that can be used on our uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Though. In fact, there's, I think it's pretty likely that sometime in the future, on the group, our group in the D&D &D campaign, we'll be running into centaurs, or that we'll have a reason to go visit centaurs. <clears throat> it's part of the lore of one of our characters. Is that this, uh, this ancient well, from Arden <clears throat> and to live among the centaurs and so in an effort to learn more about meeting of some of else at Ralph's past you might want to visit the centaurs just to learn more about Ramardin and the Order of Ramardin. Um, also, Ralph was sort of introduced to and made a, a member of Order of Ramardin, and so far, it's just uh, just a whole lot of vague information about who that was. And maybe at some point on um, Midnight Brunch, the name of our group, we'll go visiting centaurs. And then uh, this, this one might show up as one of the visited. I have to think about putting the wash on. On one hand, I really want kind of a large brush for the wash to try to get it even. And I don't want I don't want the horse part of the centaur to all so you know just become all streaky and weird looking. I want the wash to go on fairly evenly and just provide some highlights of the musculature of the horse. Okay, so could do that by using kind of this pointy brush. Use that to spread things around. Then that raises the possibility of just having streakiness because of you know, it's fairly pointy. I could use this one, which is kind of beat up. It's got, you know, weird bristles, but it's a little wider, but it also has potentially, a, you know, some control of the point so that I can get the wash up next to the armor, for example, without going over it. Well, and of course, there's a the really big brush, which would be great for doing that, you know, just spreading the wash over large areas. You know, maybe I'll use a combination of brushes, but I think I'm going to try this one as kind of the um, 
compromise at this point. Got to dry. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll get started on the armor on this one while I'm waiting for that to dry. At least get maybe the darker one on the steel. It's lapsing into silence here today. Um, you have much to say, so nothing much to say about nothing, not saying things. I'm going to just start putting this on. This is um, nice metallic paint. Spreads well. Gets pretty good coverage. It was, uh, it was very thin because it was designed to be used with airbrushes on airplane models. Also works with brushes. It doesn't leave very many brush marks. It's pretty good that way. Um, at least on these small surfaces, I've never, I haven't used it on an airplane yet. Get around to doing that someday. On if I ever finish my submarine on Submarine Wednesday. If that ever gets done, and who knows, I and mean, with the rate it's going, it might be one of those perpetual projects, you know, that thing. Yeah, it got me all over her back. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Relaxing painting is messy painting today. The body color covers that, or at least covers it well enough. Time to do that. with this. Good thing I'm doing this early in the stream then. You know, this could, can be, this will have a chance to dry and I can paint over the, the flaws later. As, uh, as is sometimes the case with relaxing painting, Dyson Dungeons, it becomes not quite as relaxing as one would hope making a mess with um, Dyson Dungeons.
nailing hand cramp already. Wow. I've been getting those sometimes during the stream. Usually the hand that I'm using to hold the model and cramp up. And all of a sudden it's like... Twisted in kind of a weird way. It's probably because my hand cramped up. Why? Because it just because it was it wanted to, you know. Something better to do on a Monday morning than than cramp up. Okay, well, there. There's that. And I'll let that dry a little bit, and then I'll put the other armor color on. In the meantime, I need to figure out if I want to paint the whole quiver. Paint the whole quiver. And that red color that I was using, that I was going to use for the bow. I'm going to paint the quiver just a little bit different. I'm not sure, but I don't, I don't think I want to make a whole lot of different colors on this one. It's like a little, a little metal. Yeah, I'm at the top there. I think I'll, I'll, I can't tell what that is. I think I'll paint the bow, this nice dark red, the same color that I painted the spear here and the feathers. And then I'll paint the shaft of the arrow. I'll just paint that like wood. And again, I think they have like too many colors all over the place. But the quiver and the strap, I've got a couple of red colors I might, might use other than the scarlet red. Guess what I'm going to do, I can't keep putting it off, is I'm going to put the wash on the horse and hope that that turns out like I'm hoping it turns out. So I hope that what I hope happens is what happens, which is that I'll be able to spread the, the wash on this nicely and so it will look really nice and chestnutty. Hello. See how that goes. Sometimes you're just never really quite sure how the paints are going to behave. But, um, and as I keep reminding myself and anybody who's watching or listening to this, let's let the paint dry and put another coat of primer over it. Start over. There's always that. like to see if it'll hold. This is a really big, heavy kind of thing. I've got these handy dandy holders, but sometimes, <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, sometimes that happens. Okay. 
Man, it's not going to stick. Oh, it'll give me something to do. Is I'll have to. Now I've got less to hold it with. Uh, yeah, that was bad. So the rosin and the rosin printer sometimes is uh, it's quite fragile. That was bad. That was bad. But fortunately, it broke off. Um, next to the hooves, I can epoxy this. I'm going to put the wash on first, and then mix up some epoxy, and put this together. And that'll be a good use of about five minutes for the epoxy. And then, um, then uh, yeah, it'll all get painted, and no one will ever know, unless they were watching this, that I... <laughs> wow. That was the biggest thing I've broken. I've broken off swords and spear tips and things. Okay, I've done that fairly often. But I've never, I've never done that. That was, uh, that was pretty spectacular. So I was trying to decide whether to put it on that holder rather than try to hold it with, um, I don't need these on for this by the base, but now, now there's really no choice. So I want to keep breaking it, so now I... Well, there we are. That was a thing. This pretty dramatically changes the color. Now it becomes a very nice, rich, chestnutty color. It's getting a little streaky because this which is a little less liquid than some of the others. But I like the, what it does to the color.
I have to rotate this you know, a fair amount because there's ample opportunity uh, to just miss spots. to spread this like along the body contours as much as I can from top to bottom. It's going to be streaky, but it be streaky in uh, the orientation top to bottom. You can see the color changed pretty dramatically. And you know, it's just a really pretty chestnut horse color. Me around to make sure there aren't any real obvious spots, or maybe even not so obvious spots. on the tail here to see if I can highlight the uh, okay one last bit and that's the, uh, you know dropping it like that is the best way to snap off the pure spear plank, which I have already snapped off. It broke there right at the hand. So I had the pleasure of cementing that back on. Okay, there's one last bit here. I'm going to use this brush. The, um, the shock of hair on its top matches the of the horse. Okay, um, I'm going to let this dry, and while I'm drying this, I'm going to take a quick break, and I will be back, Please, it'll be a short one, it'll be a two break day, so I'll be back in just a little bit. Yeah, so that was just a short break because this me right up front about it. The renovations that are going on in the house, there was something that needed to be done down here. And it made a lot of noise. It would have been um, unpleasant. It would have been unpleasant to have that be on the stream. So I got to take a break and 
Uh, what I'm doing now is getting the epoxy out because I busted that. It just, wow, it's just a day, right? Every day is just a day of the days of breaking things and stuff. So this is five minute epoxy, which means that it's supposed to set up in five minutes. There's not much of it left in these. Right? We have some new stuff, but it's like, you know, there's still some left, you might as well use it. Then, takes a to, um, it's gonna take a long time since it's plugged. Yeah. So the epoxy comes in two parts. As most do, there's the epoxy rosin, which is a thing that actually is an adhesive. And then there's the epoxy hardener that does a you know, chemical reaction with the rosin to uh, hard. I guess why it's called hardener. Okay, well. There we go. That's way more than I need, but there it is. The hardener with the five minutes stuff smells really bad. I have some 30 minute epoxy, which is, you might guess, is designed to set up in 30 minutes rather than five minutes. So, you know, I spooned out here like 50 times more than I need, but it was just, it wasn't coming out of the container very well. I am, I, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of it, that stuff. I can just tell by the consistency that this some of the solvents in it are evaporating because the bottles are almost empty. Getting on my hands. I'm just getting some isopropyl alcohol before the stuff sets up. Isopropyl alcohol yeah. cleans it up. I'm really surprised that I haven't gotten like a slop of paint all over my hands yet, given how this is going. You know, spilling things, breaking things, especially the breaking things. You did a great job of breaking things. Really, what I'm going to do here might seem a little weird, but the surface the surface is very smooth, okay? And epoxy likes to have little irregularities to grab onto. Just use a little sandpaper on that. Yeah, this stuff is setting up really fast. I'm trying to get it on the bottom so that I don't have a ridge across the top. Once I cement this together, I probably will. It'll probably squeeze out a little bit and I'll wipe it down a little bit with the uh, isopropyl.
you know, that's just how it comes. I dropped it into a really big piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Went under the workbench trying to find the thing I dropped. It's like two inches wide. A gigantic thing. How can I not see it? Any invisible. Here. That's why. Because it went flying way back there. Get this together before it sets up. We're running out of time. My five minutes are almost up. The two parts, you know, go back together just as they were before they were broken. It should be practically invisible. I'm just going to hold this for a couple minutes to make sure that the epoxy is set. And then, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be a line showing, but it'll be on the base and won't be, won't be hugely obvious. And then I need to, I got some on my hands. Just need to clean it off. And every time, every time I try to clean it, I make it worse. So just quit messing with it. Just hold it for another couple seconds, and let this thing become a thing. How can everything be? How can I not hold something still for five minutes? Okay, just get it in place. Push the pieces together. Get it like that. Put that on. If it's messy, it's messy. Don't play with it anymore. And leave it alone. And um, throw this away so I don't get my fingers. Clean off my fingers. I'm reminding myself what to do here. And then I'll you know, paint the rest of the armor on this one. Okay, well, that was, uh, 
relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. What I managed to do was break the base on this. That was really very poorly done, very messy. Um, I did get the body of the horse washed and it looks okay. Yeah, don't mess with it. After that base sets up, I'm going to paint the body of the centaur with the speed paint like I was encouraged to do, and uh, hopefully that will look okay. If not, well, then it'll be ruined. This one is going to be a gray horse, and I'm painting the armor first using the same color combination as the other one. Shows off the little Damascus in the print. And then I'm going to use a very light gray on the body and a slightly darker gray on the mane and her hair. Um, going to paint the bow and the fletches, the feathers on the arrow, that dark red, and then something I'm not sure what for the quiver. Um, dark aluminium. There it is. This is the color I'm going to be using for the rest of the bands on the armor. And I'm going to use this brush. It gives me a little more control than the one I used before. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and I don't, I shouldn't need these for this section of the painting, but it's just working better today to uh, put these on so I can see a little better. Yeah, the painting. I'm going to paint the base of these green like it's grass. And I've got some green wash. I'm pretty sure it's still around here that we have used for the sewer tiles. <laughs> yeah, it's dark green. There's still enough of it. It'll make it look a little blobby, kind of like a grassy field or just sewer, sewer moss. I'm not sure how it'll turn out. We'll see. Right, so put some of this on in different places and do some more relaxing painting. Here I am painting and relaxing. Must stay. It's a coherent point. That's kind of what's happening here today. I mean, it's working okay, but the bristles at the tip are separating from each other.
I think I was gonna, gonna talk about Flintstones. When the Flintstones first came out, I don't remember what year, but I remember it. It was really kind of a big deal. My parents were saying, there's something new coming on TV. What a cartoon. I suppose nowadays, adult cartoon you know, means something different than it did then. So we won't, won't go into that, just acknowledge that that's not what was meant, okay? What was meant was that the primetime show, most cartoons, except the ones that uh, showed up on like the wonderful world of Disney, okay? Cartoons were not a prime time thing. They were like a after school thing. The Bullwinkle show. You know, classics like that. Even though they were very clever and adults could enjoy them, were not advertised to be, you know, Motion. It was because it was, you know, this weird thing. Who would what? If it just said a cartoon show, parents, you know, would say, "Oh, that's for the kids." I don't do kids stuff anymore. People who are advertising on things wanted adults to watch it because they wanted adults to buy the stuff that they were advertising, which was not just kids' toys. It was advertised that the ads were, you know, they might, for all I know, they might have even been like cigarette ads or something. I can't say, I really don't recall. I don't recall the ads. Watch this. What's this? It's an adult cartoon. What does that mean? It means that it's uh, designed for adults as well as kids, because cartoons are always for kids, right? It's TV. We watch TV at night. Let's watch this too. Yeah. So that was the Flintstones. And they had this really catchy theme song, you know, Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. It turned out to be was that it was an animated version of a classic television show, and before that, a radio show called The Honeymooners. Jackie Gleason, it was, uh, what was his name, Ralph? What's his name? It's his sidekick, as well. I think he was the Cramden. I think he was Ralph Cramden, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, you should check it out. The Honeymooners were hilarious. It was, um, it was a good show for the times to talk about there because they were not, there we go. I finally got paint all over my hands like I should. Um, because the TV families were not wealthy. They had this big suburban house and there's a TV writer and except for all in the family which did not have a rich family in it. Most TV shows had, had people who were you know middle class and even the Beverly Hillbillies because 
they, they got oil wealth and um, they went to California. Beverly Hills, swimming pools, movie stars, all that. Anyway, the honeymooners are pretty cool because Ralph Cramden was was a bus driver. Maybe that because they talked about him being a bus driver and he would come home from work wearing his bus driving uniform. And his friend, played by Art Carney, I think his name was. Yeah, he was actually a sewer worker. If I recall correctly, so um, yeah, they were not healthy. But the the Flintstones, on the other hand, were more were definitely upscale compared to the original honeymooners. I mean, they weren't living like in a mansion or something like uh, Fred's boss from the quarry. But they had modern conveniences like a garbage disposal. Garbage disposal was some sort of dinosaur thing. Everything was dinosaur. -y. There were no uh, mechanical things like uh, their car. It was it wasn't even pedal powered. Okay, it was just like your feet stuck out of the bottom and you pushed it along with your feet, like running. Basically, you were s sitting down running. That's how those cars worked. Okay, when this dries. Um, I'm going to paint the body color on the horse, which is going to be this really light gray color. I'm going to go be able to use this brush. You know, there's a bunch of barking going on, so something's happening. Yeah, um, that. So I'll be painting the body color on the horse, and then I'll do the tail and her hair, and then the um, the bow and the quiver and all of that kind of stuff. This one I need to. I think I need to stop procrastinating and paint the body. I was told by Nicole, our artist, who really should be doing this, to use the speed paint. That that's going to work just fine. I hope so. I don't know. I've used speed paint like twice. Never on something like this detail that was on a really large model where I just brushed it on. And I hope it looks okay. We'll find out. Good stir. There's actually two colors of pigments in this paint. I guess that's how it works. Then the solvent, and the darker one is heavier than the lighter one. And so just automatically supposedly like a wash settles into the crevices and gives gives it the detailed look that one would want on this. Uh oh, here it goes. We'll squeeze some out. It's really dark. I don't know. It's supposed to be skin colored, but let's see. It's going on like a wash. No. I need to, um, it's against the gray that looks bad. I'm going to have to put some sort of base coat on this because it really is more of a wash than anything else. Um, and it's designed to go over a base coat and the primer is not the base coat that way that I want. So that's going to wait and I'm going to 
probably I'm going to use ivory. I think ivory would be a good color uh, to base coat the flesh part. Let's give that a, a little weight. But yeah, it, it just it is not going to look good on the gray at all. So I'm going to let that uh, set for a bit. Oh look, that didn't break off again. That actually worked. And start painting the base coat on the horse. And then I'll get the ivory paint out. I've used that fairly often. Uh, it's a light color. And then the wash should go on it and not and look too bad. Yeah, as soon as I put it on, it, it was like the flesh tone kind of wash effect is just not working on the gray primer. Nope, nope, nope. But that gives me an excuse to spend yet more time um, painting these centaurs, right? light gray stop phone ringing this morning Didn't really use this color very much. But I wanted the body of the horse to be fairly light, and the neutral gray is actually the color of the primer, which is a little darker than I wanted. So, Stonewall gray it is. I'm going to paint the uh, the tail, and there's a little little bits of uh, longer horse hair around the hooves, darker gray color. No, I might make it. I think I'll use the neutral gray on that. I don't want it to be hugely different in terms of color. But I want it to be a shade darker, kind of like you can see the tail and this is a little darker than the rest of the body. The hooves are for what hooves. The hooves have to be painted black. Don't want to forget that. There's a name for the horse doesn't the other one did it's not clearly the, the mark here in terms of the print the other one you know down around the tops of the hooves pretty clear demarcation line where there was um, longer hair. 
I'll do it anyway, but I just have to make it up, make up where it goes because the print doesn't show it very well. I think she's a watchdog. So she keeps watching out the window, right? It's a while someone someone dares to walk along the street. And sometimes they dare have a dog with them. She lets us know she's watching. And I don't know. I've I've never really gotten any feedback, so I don't know if um people can hear it or not the dog barking I mean I don't know the names of horse parts I know that the, the bottoms the bottom things here are who's and I know that uh, that's a tail that I know. And that if there, if this was a real horse and not a centaur, along the top of its head would be longer hair too. And that, that would be the mane. These are legs, right? Even on a horse, they're still called legs. Usuals, the usuals aren't showing up like who. Who's on first, but that that's their chat name, who. Maybe chat. We had like a message deleted because of some sort of an interception of something that was nefarious. Maybe chat got turned off. I don't know. I can't tell. Unless I try to chat in my own chat. Which I probably could do. Anyway, yeah, so the Flintstones, the modern Stone Age family. I think I, as long as I don't sing, I think it's okay, right? If I do like a William Shatner version of the theme song. Stone Age family from the town of Bedrock. It was a very long theme song. It went on a long time. Theme songs back then did. From the town of Bedrock. So we knew where they lived. It was Bedrock. See, the theme song was very informative in terms of you know, the setting. They're a case right out of history. It wasn't the cleverest lyric, but it, it did rhyme. So that made it a song. Rhyming lyrics. Let's ride with the family down the street. It's through the courtesy of Fred's good feet. That's where we were introduced to their vehicles. Kind of, which had big stone wheels and like a canvassy kind of top. And what they meant by the courtesy of Fred's good feet was that that's how it went. Um, you know, he sat in the seat in the car thing, whatever, and uh, pushed it along with the seat, just ran along, like I mentioned before. The locomotion was provided by running while seated. You know, and I don't know if that was terribly efficient or, or whatever, but it was clever. You know, it was kind of fun to watch. How the vehicles worked.
Kim sana geldi? Good time. Yeah, but due time. That was that was Fred's kind of catchphrase or being happy or excited. Yeah, but da ba doo. Just like now, when somebody's got like a catchphrase on a TV show that's kind of a popular show, right? Everybody says it. So all these people like really paid attention to a lot of the Hi Bob. Okay. The Bob Newhart show. Um, but to do a little metallic touch up on the front here, I got Raven a little bit high on the armor. Just tiny little spots that need to be fixed. This paint is drying really nice and fast, so I should be able to do that right away, and then the, the paint I put out earlier should still be working. Let's see, it's the lighter of the two colors. It's this one. So let me see if I can do that. Let's see if I can get some of the paint out of this. Mix it up because it's the metallic bits are separating from the white gray that that's that's a good color definitely a lot of watching Stop watching going on there. Park. At some point, I'll have to do some great touch up. Um, but as I'm looking at this, I'm noticing the thing that I almost forgot in the last one, which is that there are straps holding on the armor. Very ill-defined. I think you can you can kind of see them there under the wash. I did those dark red. Well, actually, just red. And then the wash made them darker. But I'm going to um, just, I think I'm going to paint those next. You can see them on this side. Let me go in there, there. So I'm going to use this little bitty brush and try to paint them. And then, you know, where the paint un invariably splotches off to the sides. then retouch it with the light gray. Neutral gray will be okay. I'm gonna use that use that for the whatever those little things that are called at the bottom of the hooves there. Um, and her hair and the tail. Um, I'm just using red for this. Just red. Yeah. 
I'm really letting everything just pile up in the way here, too. I'm using scarlet red. Which is like that. But this red is going to appear underneath a wash. And so I'm actually starting with a lighter red. For whatever reason, I'm not getting enough paint on the brush. Drying on the brush too quickly or whatever. Let's just say it's not it's not spreading. Frustrating painting with Tyson Dungeons. Way too much on the brush. No happy mediums here today. It's almost Halloween. We talk about a different kind of medium, I think. Hopefully that medium is, your medium is happy. So for some reason this red is either going from not enough paint on the brush to too much paint. It's way too much and it's just making a mess. The gray will cover it up. Oh, whatever. I'm trying to paint the detail and then just end up going back and forth until the line looks sort of I really wish I'd never seen the, the, the straps on the side of the horse here. Because if I hadn't noticed they were there, I 
try to paint them. It'd be so messy. So there it is. It's just messy. Okay, well, I'll come back and fix that later when that dries. Get the gray out again and I think I'll go on to painting the, the body part, the humanoid part of this ivory. Because, um, like I said, with the speed paint, it's really more of a wash than a paint, and it's not opaque. And it looks terrible against the primer. brushes on this. I'm going to be using this one to get the edges and then this one I think to uh, fill it in. Ooh. I'm doing this. So this is going to be very light color, off, slightly off-white. I don't want to use just pure white. I think will be a much better base coat for the speed paint, which is supposed to be used over a light colored undercoat. Stones and although not wealthy, they were definitely upscale compared to the honeymooners, as they're uh, pretty much a knockoff of that. He worked at a quarry. laborers at the quarry. Yeah, you the know, you know, significant significant menagerie of dinosaur based conveniences. Garbage disposal. So on, um, you know, it was, of course, you know, the show was not historically accurate. To the consensus is that humans and dinosaurs did not coexist, and so, you know, they couldn't have had pet, pet dino. Or dinosaur based uh, garbage disposal. But it was just a cartoon, so you know, you could get you could get away with things that you know, were like that. It was just entertainment. It wasn't meant to be you know, it was a science show.
you know, other than everybody going around going, yeah, but ever do. Why would you do that? People did. I mean, other than that. Too many or anything like specific about any of the episodes. So it must have been a fairly forgettable kind of thing. You know, like most TV shows were. Anyway, yeah, talking about the Flintstones because... Something while I was doing the fixing painting here. His uh, sidekick kind of character was Barney Rubble, carrying on the uh, stone steam kind of thing. Red, uh, red limestone, Barney Rubble, working in a quarry. The Stone Age, right? You have to be reminded of that all the time with stone references. Yeah, they reminded us all the time with stone references and names and working in a quarry and just digging out stones. So. They kept that going, that was pretty consistent. They named it Dino, even though it was spelled Dino, but they didn't want it to be obviously a dinosaur, so it was Dino. It was cute. It was a cute, cute dino pet. beginning this is not going to be a display model quality model but you know I do want it to look good so be careful remember and around the, the hands here on the shaft of the spear stuff that's being done today. Today is a busy day. We had what, supposed to be four, four contractors here today. Insulation, uh, siding, electrician, and um, a dumpster. In giving rise to all the watching of the watchdog barking. It's just, you know, being because
pretty good job of staying on camera lately. It's been fairly typical for me to wander off. I mean, not just talking and wandering off. I do that all the time, but for the, the work that I'm working on to just sort of eh, move off, move off camera. this paint before a submarine I've always needed two coats but I think because this is basically an undercoat for the speed paint that one coat should be sufficient just one coat I should clean it off, but be done with it and before I bring out a light, a larger brush to get the bigger surface areas. I'd be lazy and not clean it off, and then see what happens. I regret this, or it'll work out just fine. But cleaning the brush is going to be is going to take a little bit of a little bit of cleaning. Use the isopropyl alcohol for sure, as the paint builds up around the base of the bristles, and the water is not powerful enough solvent to get it out of there. This big, big ball of paint around the base of the brush. You probably can't see it on camera, but it's pretty messy. I don't know if this will be a good time for a break. It's the tiniest little dot. It's here, I don't know. It still shows. And if it disappears, then I don't need to worry about it. Okay, well, this doesn't look really great, but it's just a base coat for a darker color. I'll get some of this paint off and then um, clean it more thoroughly later. But I need to, there's a lot of surface area that needs to be covered here, so I'm using a bigger brush. The, 
knock the point of the spear against the work surface. We want, you know, we want an opportunity to break it off again. paint on it. It just came out terrible. I'm just going to draw before I use the speed paint on it. I'm going to let this dry pretty thoroughly, which means over the break. You can see why, it, where I've used this in the past on any kind of large surface area, I've always put two coats on. That's like a lot of whites and yellows and even some reds. It doesn't cover very well. Usually this color is used for tiny, tiny things like teeth. You know, just little, little bits of, jeez, little bits of spots. In this case, it is the base coat for some speed paint that I will be applying after the break. keep rotating the model when even it looks like it's done because I missed a big spot under the arm there. Mm, yeah, little spots of touch up here and there. Let's see if I can't touch that right away if this paint is still good. And it's not. It's the tiniest little spot, but it's uh, white against the metallic and it just shows. That's it. Here with a lighter color. Okay, um, get that in an alcohol bath, but this one I, can, I think I can clean this way. And what I will do next is I'm going to paint the uh, tail 
and hair and the spots around the hooves. That's it. Knock that over with the tip of the spear. So something that only got knocked over, but it almost broke the spear again. That was... I'm being exceptionally clumsy today. If you come back after the break, definitely want to do that. You want to come back after the break because for some reason today is offering the possibility of having a major oops, not just these little oopses that I've been having. Well, breaking the base of that was a pretty, pretty significant oops, but, um, you know, at least it was a spot that could be fixed fairly easily. Um, I'm going to cap this up and use a different brush. This one again. <laughs> Just gonna do neutral gray. The color is really close, pretty close to the color of the primer. It's a little bit lighter than the primer, but that's about it. It's at the around the hoofs, hooves. break I'll um have to remember to paint the who's black to help me remember that I'm going to put the black paint right out here where it's in the way and since it's in the way I'll probably see it and then go well, why is that in the way and I'll go oh yeah I remember I had to paint the who's black Taking my break pretty much after I'm done with these bits with this color. And then, as usual, I will promise to be back in about a half an hour. And then, as usual, I'll probably be back in about 35 40 minutes. Although, the last couple of times I, uh, I actually came back on time, it's a little bit odd. I managed to do that. We'll, we'll see. Maybe this time, too. I don't really have much to do on break other than... Drink. You break stuff. Let's see. Where is this color? This one all.
Cosmos. Yeah, it was kind of a fun cartoon. We all watched it together as a family because it was an adult cartoon, you know. And most most of us, we, we had seen The Honeymooners. You know, the Honeymooners had been on television not too terribly long before that, and so we were familiar with that. And we were able to, um, to enjoy some of the parallels. any kind of copyright thing going on maybe there wasn't you know it's like well these these are not actors portraying the same characters that you were portraying these are animated figures totally different you know, maybe they got permission from the whoever owned whatever copyright there was or trademarks from the honeymooners they didn't you know explicitly make reference to the show at all, but it was pretty clear that it was patterned after the Honeymooner show. Sued. But somehow or other that didn't become an issue. tell that because there are people running around going abba dabba do that wouldn't happen it's a very successful show this then it would just be really really dumb it was dumb and annoying anyway but everybody at least knew that somebody was trying to be Fred You know, it's a pretty successful show. So then, then a new one came out called The Jetsons. Obviously, building off of the success of the Flintstones. The theme song just pretty much just introduced the characters. Meet George Jetson, Jane, his wife. Elroy, Elroy, Elroy. Yep, I mean, there wasn't anything very clever about it. They just named the characters. So that made that made writing the lyrics pretty easy. You know, the songwriter just had to know the names of the characters and get them all into one short theme song. Not that challenging. Okay, um... So there needs to be a fair amount of light gray touch up around where I attempted to um, paint these these uh, stripes, which are the what those were were the uh, straps holding it on, holding on the armor. And as I'm looking at that, I am seeing significant. Um, Need to be touching up red all over the armor here. I'm trying to take it out of the bottle top, the little nozzle. I don't really want to squeeze out a whole drop of this paint just for just like a little drop. A little dot. And it looks like this. That was the only place I made that mess. Okay, yeah. What I managed to do is I kept putting my finger on the tail of the paint. 
But it's getting to be time for a break when that kind of thing happens. I've been wearing these long enough to take them off. Oh, yeah, the light's almost burned out. Time to recharge. I might put those on the charger while I'm upstairs. Then I'll forget to bring them back down, so I'll have to run back up and get them again. But that light really helps. Gets the extra light on the spots I'm trying to paint. When I get back, I'm going to touch up the gray around these straps. They're not too bad. They're not too awful. So it won't take that much. Um, paint the hooves black. Okay. And then try to do some of the detail like the quiver the straps holding on the quiver and the bow and anyway yeah the detail other than the body and then i'll get the ivory paint out again and do the same thing to her that i did to this one which is doing an ivory undercoat for the speed paint and see how that ends up looking. Pretty scabby. I might I might do some when I have the ivory paint out to paint her, I probably will do some just a little additional touching up so it looks a little more uniform. Because I don't know how much the speed paint will cover up those inconsistencies. Don't don't really know. All right, black hooves, gray touch up, ivory paint, mm. black red with a bow and the fletch. And I think I'm just going to use this red brown for the shaft of the arrow. I might just paint the quiver the same black red. You know, it's it's the color I used for this. So, so I, I think that's just all I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep the color consistent. So bunches of colors of bits of paint and stuff that need to go on this yet. And then the the wash on the horse's body is going to be dark gray. So the horse itself will become very much darker. The color change will be just as significant as it was on, on this one. All right, uh, break time. I will be back in sort of a half hour. So check in again at about 1230 Eastern time and that's when the break should end. See you then. As usual, it took longer than it should. Oh, breaks just do that. They just take longer than they should. So I've got a bunch of colors here. Uh, probably should start putting them on. That's, I knew I was going to forget it. I plugged my head magnifiers in because the light needed to be recharged. And uh, it's upstairs. Yeah, that's where it is. So I'm going to do a couple of things just so that you know that uh, I'm doing relaxing painting. I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the hooves black. I think I'm, I can do that without my head magnifiers. And then maybe do a little, you know, and then I'll have to get my head magnifiers probably. No, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a couple of things done here before I run away again. It's like it was like a 97% chance that I would that I was gonna forget those. 
I mean, I mean not a hundred. There was a slight, a slight possibility, a tiny little chance that I would actually remember to bring my head magnifiers back down on the charger, but you know that that it didn't happen. Yeah, basically I'm uh, painting the base and not the hooves here. to tell where the fuzzy uh, long hair is and where the hoof is. This model is just very, very well defined and some of it just is not so much. This is one of those not so much parts. dabbing it on because I want a slightly ragged edge. You know, with a heavy, heavy, uh, darker. There it comes down. I'm dabbing this on. I can. Um, oh dear, chat just isn't working. I would have thought that somebody, you know, somebody would have been in chat today, but it doesn't seem to be. Uh, there's nobody there ever since I got that warning about uh, possible spam earlier. to do you know, so I apologize if somebody's been in chat and I've been ignoring you it's I didn't intend to ignore you it's just that um, it's not showing up in chat keep playing yeah I'm going to uh, reset the chat Can't get any worse because it's not working.
I'm gonna close. Let me see if I got the right one. Okay, now I'm gonna let it sit for a bit, you know. Yep, set for a bit and then uh, restart it. And see what happens. No. You are now welcome to the chat room if anybody's out there. Uh, hopefully, it's the right chat room. But <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see, I was going to paint um, the red, I think. There's a nice dark red that I'm using to paint the arrow-related stuff, the bow and the quiver. be a little metallic ball in there. I don't hear it rattling. These, these are bottles of the, uh, <clears throat> hope I don't know, need those. The five minute epoxy. It's like the third time I have banged into the point of the spear on the other the other centaur and just what are the odds of me breaking it off or getting higher all the time? This is not the right brush for this. This is probably not the right brush for this either, but it would be better since everything around this gets touched up again. It's a matter of making sure that it's that things are covered at this point. After I get this red paint on here, I definitely need to go get my head magnifiers again because I won't I won't be able to do some of the touching up that I need to do or some of the detail painting um, without them. So I apologize, but it not totally unexpected that I would would have forgotten after I plugged them in I was looking right at them and instead of grabbing them I got distracted because during break there's always something um, this time there was multiple somethings and so that's why the break always takes longer than than I'm planning because I'm working on always something. How many somethings there were? One, two, I think there were, there were four somethings this particular break. And that doesn't count. I'm hungry, I need to get a snack. And then trying to, you know, get a snack that I could eat really quickly without a problem because, you know, I needed to get back here to do this. Because I know how much all of the people who are not in chat today really miss uh, the relaxing painting. 
if I'm not relaxing the painting. Painting. Okay, this next bit is just going to be a little messy because I'm, I need to paint the strap here for the quiver. And this brush is, is too big to do that. But I'm going to anyway. And then hope that when I get the ivory paint out to paint the undercoat for the you know, the skin part of the centaur that, um, that I can get the lines right. And I'm just being a little, I'm being a little lazy and messy here. <laughs> and I shouldn't, but I, you know, I'm just letting you know that I know what I'm doing. Not in the sense of, I always know what I'm doing, but in the sense of, I know that I am kind of making this messier than it should be, hoping to make it unmessy at the next stage of painting. And I wanted to get it as much done before I took another short break, getting the head magnifiers back from the charger. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of this red paint on places that where it shouldn't be, but oh well. These two spots down here are the only ones that really much matter. Right here where it touches the armor. Where there's an arbitrary dividing line between the quiver and the armor. Not, not well defined in the mold. I talked some about the Flintstones, you know, they were a modern Stone Age family. Stone themed references, you know, bedrock and Flintstone and rubble. Just, you know, to keep it. I mean, that was at the time kind of kind of a clever thing to do, right? To have everything be stone named. Then the Jetsons came out. It's kind of a lame theme song where all they did was name the characters. And 
and they had to, they sang that every time because, you know, you would you would forget the name of all the characters between one week and the next probably. And uh, yeah, so that came out in the thing. The thing I most remember about the Jetsons, and I found this really annoying, and I've mentioned this before, I know, is the lack of continuity. Okay. They had this house with like moving sidewalks and all these supposedly modern, super modern in the future, futuristic, I suppose say supposed to be futuristic stuff but it was always different stuff each week okay there were very few things that stayed consistent from one episode to the other I don't know if they did that on purpose or whether that was you know it's like they were constantly renovating their house or something and always having different things or whether they just need, you know, they had different animators in each episode or something and couldn't remember what it was like last time or maybe they just didn't have any continuity person or anyone who cared about continuity. I don't know. But it, things were always different each time. Things that you would expect to stay the same, like a kitchen appliance, right? Oh. Okay, well, the parts that need to be dark red are dark red now. At least as far as I can see without my head magnifiers or my glasses. I think I can I think I can get the light gray on too before I run upstairs and get my head magnifiers. It's a nice color though for uh now for your accessories. Hi. Thanks for joining chat. Things are going okay. I have um, finished washing the horse part of this centaur and did a base coat. I discovered that if I was using the flesh colored speed paint that it did not work on the gray uh, primer at all. So I put some ivory paint on it and I need to Oh, second coat some sp spots. I think the, the speed paint will cover up some of the irregularities, but I don't want to take a chance. I did manage to break uh, the base. I thought, well, instead of holding the base, why don't I put it on this holder thing? And as I was trying to push down on it, uh, snapped it right off. That was fun. But this one is getting close to being done. I just need to do a second coat of the the body color and then do the speed paint wash and then I started on the other one and I've got the, the horse body base coated that's going to be washed in a uh, dark gray wash so it's going to be a much darker looking horse than it is at the moment and I just painted you know the quiver and things so I'm going to be um, touching up the light gray now there's just some spots here and there and where the straps are that need to be covered up and then I need to take a very very short break tiny little break because I have this head magnifier thing with a light and magnifying lenses on it that I'm going to need in order to well you know to do the shaft the arrow shaft and when I start painting the the ivory on this one I need to be able to uh, see the boundaries the boundary lines a little better than I can right now so it's been going pretty well and the monologue is the monologue has been pretty 
I don't know, like on a one to ten scale, I'd give it like a two and a half. It's not been very good. I'm, I'm trying to compare and contrast the um, Flintstones with uh, the Jetsons. So you can imagine that that's... You know, that's, that's not like something that's going to really grab people's attention, I don't think. You never know, but... Didn't really have anything else to talk about, so... Flintstones and Jetsons. Just comparing the, the productions. I haven't been talking about, like, if they got into a fight or something, who would win? I suppose we could do that. But that would be highly dependent upon whether whether weapons were allowed, wouldn't it? Okay, well, let's speculate about that. So the Flintstones and the Jeffersons get into a fight. Why? I don't know. Um, you know, they're separated by eons. I'm just Not just centuries, but forever in time. But, uh, I don't know, let's, let's mix metaphors. So Mr. Peabody's Wayback Machine malfunctions on an episode of Rocky and Bullwinkle and somehow brings the Flintstones and the Jeffersons together, not the Je Jetsons, duh. Yeah, it brings them together at a arbitrary point in time that's that's neither of their timelines it would, wouldn't be fair but it's neither of their timelines and they um what would their dispute be um they'd, they'd have a dispute over advertising revenue right I mean, that would make sense. They both have primetime TV shows, so advertising revenue would be, that would be something they could be a dispute over. Even across, even across eons of time, something financial like that, that would, it would make sense. That would, that's timeless. Those kinds of disputes would just be timeless, so <clears throat> they have a dispute about that. And in this timeline that Peabody sends them to, they don't have um, they don't have any courts. You know, they don't even have like Judge Judy or anybody like that. Not even another TV show to um, to which to bring their dispute. But, okay, so this is, this is what happens. So they're in this alternate mistaken timeline that Mr. Peabody sends them to because the Wayback Machine malfunctions. And they come together and they have a dispute over advertising revenue. And there's no court. But in the background, in the background, all they hear are theme songs from other TV shows. Okay. Why? Why not? I mean, just making this up on the fly. Um, and it's a way back machine malfunction, so anything could happen. So one of the theme songs is uh, is the Rebel. This is. These theme songs are more or less contemporaneous with, with when these guys appeared on TV. Now, you know, Johnny Yuma was a rebel. He roamed through the West. He was fighting mad that rebel lad. 
something something. I think this is a theme song where I had the, the famous line where the only law was a look and a draw. So if you're not from the U.S., that wouldn't make any sense at all. But, you know, there was, that probably wasn't too much of an exaggeration for how some of the, the Western, like the 1800s, just after the Civil War and even before the Civil War, kind of lawless areas. There, there wasn't any real government, and if there was, there wasn't any enforcement. There was just graft and corruption. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know you'd say, and so how was that any different? Well, it was different because, um, yeah, I mean, that's how you enforce things. It's, you just killed people right there in the streets at a gunfight, kind of like duels. Sort of like duels, but without uh, without rules. Is what it was. So, <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, they're they're listening to all these theme songs playing in the background because that's just the kind of time mistake that they were sent to by the Mr. Peabody's Wayback Machine, and so they learned that the only law was a look and a draw, and they didn't really know what that means, okay? Because the Flintstones came way ahead of before that, and the Jetsons way after that. <clears throat> um, so after trying, you know, different, different variations of what a draw means and what looking means and everything, they finally realized that it meant it was some sort of duel. And that's where things got, get more complicated because, um, with the Flintstones, uh, you know, if you're going to have a duel with weapons, they, their, their weapon was a club. I think that actually showed up in their show once or twice. It's, you know, big, heavy, um, like the cartoons, because this was a cartoon. You know, since it is a cartoon, it had a cartoonish club. I think that was their weapon. I don't know if they, they had projectile weapons. They probably could have had a sling or something. They have a club. And then the Jetsons, you would think that being way in the future, that they'd have some sort of like nasty disintegrating ray or whatever. I don't know. And in the show they might have, but I can't remember whether they had weapons in the show. So I'm just going to say that <clears throat> they, in fact, did not have weapons in the show. That... Um, that they had essentially outlawed weapons. Yep, they, had, they essentially outlawed weapons in um, in their timeline. And so you would think that the that the Jetsons would have had a huge advantage because of their advanced weaponry, but instead they were more civilized, even though they're, even though they had no continuity from one episode to the other. And one thing that was that did have continuity is they didn't have weapons because they just they gave those up and they I don't know what they had instead, but not that. Anyway, the only way they could resolve their dispute over advertising revenue was apparently looking and drawing. But then they decided that draw meant some, something else, too, that, um, you know, that it wasn't just rapid fire, rapidly shooting your, your gun, because neither of them had guns. Okay, so they they decided that either because their weapons were in a, inappropriate or non-existent, that um, they would use the other meaning of the word draw. And it made sense because 
if you're going to draw something, you know, assuming it's not an abstract, but something like you're drawing something real, you would have to look at it. So they decided what was really meant was well, not some sort of, you know, projectile weapon being pulled rapidly from its container and fired, <clears throat> but that it would be, um, you look at something and draw it. Now that could get complicated too, because, uh, you know, was the winner the person who drew something the fastest, regardless of the quality of the drawing, or was the winner going to be uh, the one who had the best quality drawing, regardless of the amount of time it took? Mm, yeah, I mean, which one? Which one is it? Or is it some alternative, like some combination of maybe you have a limited amount of time to do a drawing, and then there's a, a judgment about which one was the best after that. And who would make that decision? I mean, were they judging themselves? I mean, really, how would that decision be made? And uh, what about the material for the drawing? Was it like a charcoal drawing or pencils? What medium would one be using? And they were, you know, just stuck out there <clears throat> in this demented timeline that was created by uh, a malfunction of the Wayback Machine. And <clears throat> there wasn't anybody else to arbitrate. But what did happen, what did happen in this alternative uh, thing about who would win a fight between the Flintstones and the Jeffersons is that they never really got around to it because after, you know, spending a, this immense amount of time trying to determine what look and a draw meant and listening to all these other theme songs and not having anyone to arbitrate about what draw really meant, you know, after all of that, Peabody fixed his machine and they were pulled back to their own appropriate time periods. And so we never did find out who would win if they got into a fight because uh, the fight just never happened. Couldn't because um, the circumstances that gave rise to the potential of a fight ended up uh, disappearing. Okay, <clears throat> so there's I'm going to do the shaft of the arrow next, but I need to have my head magnifiers in order to do that, to get the little bits here and there. I think I'm going to pull out the ivory paint and put one coat on this centaur and touch up this one. I'm going to touch this one up first so that it has a chance to dry. Okay. Um, so that there's a decent base coat before I try to do the the um, <clears throat> speed color and then I'll see what how the time is going because I'm not sure I'm not sure how long it's going to take for this to dry I might not be able to do the speed coat today at all uh, but even while that's wet I can I can uh, paint the bases you know at least get a base coat of paint on there but <clears throat> I need to run upstairs and get my head magnifiers and while I'm doing that, I'm not going to hit the brake at all, no. I'm going to let you just stare at this. You can just stare at this. Painting in progress. And I'll be back in like as much time as it takes to run up and down the stairs, which for me is not running as much as it is walking slowly. See you in just a couple of minutes. <laughs>
Well, that was relaxing <clears throat> getting to uh, to look at this stuff here where nothing was happening. Um, I, I got these, I went up <clears throat> and I remembered why I was upstairs. That was good. And then I remembered that I'm not done yet, so I came back up. Let's see. Yeah, it's not fully charged, but the lights are working, and <clears throat> when they're not, I really can tell the difference. So I'm going to paint the uh, shaft of the arrow. And then, um, yeah, I repaint. The key part of this really is like right here. Other side. It's not much of it, but probably need a different brush to paint the shaft, really. It's two brushes on something teeny like this, but this is this brush is not going to paint the shaft very well at all. saying this is not going to be the quality of a display model and it's not but I do wonder sometimes <sighs> okay what I'm seeing here is uh, some serious flaws in the red I did that without without my uh, magnifying head magnifiers here and yeah as a result, there's just spots that are not covered at all. Well, I'm going to have to get the red paint out again. I have to touch up spots that were painted wrong instead they weren't painted at all. What happens? Let's see that. All the time I want to do a base coat of something that um, it was just a failure to get all the surfaces painted. Then I look at it with the head magnifiers and see all sorts of spots that are poorly, uh, sometimes not at all, covered. I just wear these all the time, except when I'm painting like something really huge, like maybe the, the inside hull of the submarine, which I might be doing on Wednesday. So as a reminder, Submarine Wednesday will be on Wednesday. Largely why I, why it's called Submarine Wednesday because it features. I'm paint, working on my submarine, and it's on Wednesday. 
So that combination of, of things, uh, you know, the day of the week and the thing that I'm working on makes it Submarine Wednesday. Uh, pretty clever, huh? So, yeah, on Wednesday, I'll be working on the submarine, and if you were with us last week, you know that the bit that's being worked on are the missile tubes, and that the missile tubes were very badly molded, and they don't fit together. The two halves that get cemented together leave a seam that's highly visible, especially if it's going to be painted in a um, glossy color. And the missile tubes are supposed to be painted glossy yellow. So, <clears throat> I'm basically, I'm basically, when I said that, there doesn't need to be any kind of modifier. What I will be doing is Filing and then sanding the seams, the visible seams of the missile tubes, so that they become much less visible. The idea being that um, they're going to be much less visible. And as such, they'll look like tubes and not just two halves of tubes. Looks like there's some little buttons or buckles or something on the strap of the scabbard. Oh, there's a big area that didn't get painted at all. Hmm. It's interesting. It's not too bad. There were some spots on the bow where I thought you know, it was the easiest part to cover. That'll show, so definitely need that. This is still wet. The paint is not to drying that fast. Yeah, the um, so it's going to be a real pain in the butt. You know, doesn't get done and can't finish unless you get started. So, yeah, this brush is just about dead. I have to pull out my next, my backup one. I've got another one and then order a couple more. It's a really good detail brush. Yeah, but the, the bristles just, they disappear. Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. What color else? Oh. Yeah, the ivory needs to be done. I'm going to start by doing the touching up the base coat on this guy. Well, that's drying a little bit. And then do what I can to base coat that one. And then depending on how much time is left, I might paint the base of this one. to do that because that's the only way I can hold it but um, I'm not going to get the I know that I'm not going to get far enough along to do the speed painting on these figures today so it can take the time I think to paint the bases
pretty much what's happening is here is I'm just doing a second coat on most of the surfaces of this guy so that the base coat underneath the speed paint is somewhat uniform. It doesn't have to be perfectly uniform. It can't be as non-uniform as it is here. I think it would, too much of, the, of this would show through and it would look really gross. It might end up looking really gross anyway. There's a pretty good chance of that happening. There's less of a chance of it looking really gross if I put a second coat of this on than if I don't. So I'm going to improve my chances of not grossness by doing that. going for a smooth, flawless look here. I'm just going for um, the reduction in the non-uniformity of the color. And catching spots that weren't painted before, like the fingers. Hmm. The centaur looks very pale now. but hopefully we'll look okay after speed paint is put on. Um, okay, I need to just give it a rotation first. Let's see what I'm missing. At some point, I need to fix this. I'd like to do it sooner than later, just spots on the hair here. And there's another one, I just did it again. Those need to be fixed. And I'm going to do that, like right away, just get it done. Um, it's a two-step process. One is uh, the base coat of the brown. And then next is the wash. If I just put the wash on, would that work? I don't know. Let me try it. That would be a shortcut. Let's see if I can shortcut this. What I'm doing is I'm using the wash I used on the hair. Yeah, I think it's going to work. To um, get rid of these bright white spots. Yeah, yeah, this is a good shortcut. I just need to get it out of the brush. Again, clean this brush yet one more time as the bristles quickly disappear. And it gets to this stage and more than half the bristles are gone. 
Okay, um, I need to start painting this ivory color on this other one. And that's what I'm going to start doing. A lot of it is these, these contact line points. And then after those are done, I can use a larger brush on some of the rest of it. Takes forever. These tiny little bits of paint, trying to keep the lines straight. Sort of getting the paint in places where it doesn't want to reach. totally unproductive day because we got to reflect on uh, the Flintstones and the Jetsons. Got to speculate about what happened if, who would win if they get in a fight. You know, there's always that. Who would win if you get in a fight? One of my favorites was uh, one time we started doing that the family member who would win if we get in a fight and it was all baseball teams okay so like who would win the Orioles or the Cardinals they're both birds that's a fair fight right and then you know it would be like who would be the champion of everything but there was there was uncertainty about some teams, though. Like the angels, okay? On one hand, you're dealing with divine beings, right? So, of course, they're going to win and fight. But they're angels, right? So they shouldn't be fighting. So would, would, they, not, would they win in a fight? Or would they just simply, you know, because they're angels and they, they're good supposedly at least that's the you know the way people think about them would, there, would they just not fight at all and if they refuse to fight because they're you know angels do they actually do they lose I mean how do you how do you score that at that, that point Is it really fair that they would lose because of, you know, their very being prohibits them from fighting? We set up this scenario anyway, where these teams are fighting with each other. So we weren't really sure about that. You know, but there were interesting battles, like the bird battle between the Orioles and the Cardinals. Um, this is the one that we found really amusing. The, uh, the Red Sox versus the White Sox. Yep. Just a pair of socks. Who, who would win? Oh, yeah. That's a mess. That's, that's going to require metallic touching up. Kind of expected that to be the case, given trying to get the paint in a little cranny, even with a little brush. Not a hard touch up, though, because it's right on the front so yeah I mean so we never really knew 
we never really decided you know, who the champion would be of, if you get in a fight, who would win with the baseball teams. I do think that if the angels who are permitted to fight, you know, by their very being, potentially prohibiting them from fighting, um, that they would probably win because of their divine power. But thing that will remain unknown forever, I guess. We build up on the base of the bristles and manage to get it. It's more more metallic touching up, more opportunity for improvement there. There was pretty strong consensus though that the Red Sox versus White Sox match would have been like the fan least favorite, right? Also, the match that would have lasted the longest time. Infinite, right? Who would win that? You might have had to just, you know, just basically wait. You might have, in order for that to, that battle to happen, you might have essentially just had to wait until, look at, there's that. That's, that's the most common oops for me, is bringing the brush to a work surface and smashing it into something on the way to or from, like that spot there. And the brush wasn't supposed to be even anywhere close to that, but that's the location of an oops. Just bump. So there. That's the story of who would win in a fight. That was probably who actually was pretty uninteresting. Even I, who was telling the the tale, that was really pretty uninteresting. You know, well maybe not. Maybe it wasn't uninteresting. You know, there was speculation about whether angels would participate in the fights or not. There, I managed to get paint all over the, the hair there. Whether the angels would even participate. Because that was that's an important thing, because if they can, then the outcome would be would have been very different than if they couldn't. So possibly it would be like how long you have to wait before like one of the socks wins because its opponent just uh, disintegrated because of the passage of time. You know, there's many, many colors of touching up here after this ivory paint gets applied. Both colors of metallic, basically all the colors that are already on here. The metallics, the red, the gray. Any color that comes in contact with this color is going to require touching up. Because of uh, paint getting on it, this color getting on it. And it's supposed to be the other color. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's how these things go. How's the time going? Yeah, it looks like I'll just. This is taking a good long time because of going around all the edges. It probably this will probably finish up. This will probably fin be the last thing that gets streamed. Line is not where it should be. Not at all. up near the beginning of the stream not the end of the stream because as, as I get closer to two o'clock my painting skill such as it is begins to deteriorate even more I have to use the um, maybe the really long bristled one no Get it on my finger first. It's important to get paint on your finger so that it can touch it to spots where you would not ordinarily get paint out of place. Like that. <laughs> Side of the brush. Many, many opportunities for improvement here. there from here. begin to wonder why I even bothered painting that part first, given how much of this is going anyway, yeah. So, I can tell you that Friday is going to be 
Mm, every single color that's on here is going to be lots and lots of this little single point touching up. Just a whole lot of it. A lot, a lot of it. I didn't mess up that stroke. One brush stroke that wasn't messed up. This this color too will probably I mean have to be some touching up of the of the ivory, of course, like second coating it basically, but also I know that there'll be there will be places where it like didn't cover or when I do a touch up with the other color where I got this paint onto it it'll come back and touch the ivory and then the ivory will have to be touched up again Starting to concern me though, is since getting this on has been so challenging compared to the other centaur, is getting the speed paint applied. Because you know, I don't, it can't, you can't really put it on with tiny little dabs like this is happening. So I'm not sure. I may end up, may end up just. The speed paint might just go onto some of the other surfaces and act like a wash on it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Guess we'll guess we'll find out. We will all find out together. Friday when I resume painting this uh, the centaur. Now I can say there's just there's just little blobs of paint on every surface and every color here and there and just little spots everywhere that need a pretty significant touching up. Some of them were almost unavoidable because I couldn't reach in with this color without it happening. Some of them were just uh, carelessness. more rapid um, coverage with this larger brush it's not going to be very even that's why we're going to need a second coat on most of this wow <laughs> and that was one spot that was actually looking okay and then just well, why not it was looking okay let's just uh, have the brush bump into it why not that's a good thing bump said everything is going to need touching up places that were expected to be because they're hard to reach places that were unexpected because the brush just bumped them all on its own without any assistance from me on its way to or from the work surface just the end of stream losing focus kind of thing maybe I'm sure there's a, a, an excuse I could come up with, but, um, yeah, here, we've got some sort of, like, uh, dust or something in the way. I 
This centaur is definitely more challenging than the other one in terms of getting paint on the surfaces that need paint. Keeping it away from the surfaces that don't. Wow. Just for no reason, just bumped it. At least that's an easy spot to fix. But yeah, we plan to spend a lot of time watching paint being touched up on Friday. not going to get to painting bases today because this has taken longer than I thought it would and it turned out to be even worse and messier than I expected but you know the base coat is mostly base coated but there's just a everywhere you look everywhere you look there's a spot that needs to be fixed. A lot of the red, the metallics, the gray for the hair, every place where this color touches another color. It is a mess. Yep. There it is. One almost, there's a spot big spot that's obvious there. One getting close to being base coated yet very messy, needing a lot of touch up. Um, other centaur. The horse body looks okay though. At least that looks okay. But this, this is going to be a thing. Um, I think that when I come back on Monday, no, Friday. Today's Monday. When I come back on Friday, I will be here Wednesday as well. Don't forget Submarine Wednesday. But Friday, I'll be working on these minifigs again. I'll probably do the second coat of this ivory first before I do the touching up because the way this is going on, it looks like there's a high likelihood that... Um, Putting on the second coat will create more need for more touching up. So I'm going to do that. Put the second coat of this ivory on the to be colored flesh eventually. And then, then I will do all the touching up. And it looks like there's a lot of spots, and actually there are, but it doesn't take that long. Uh, because they're just dots. Almost all of them are just dots. And the main time-consuming thing is rotating that around so that I can um, I can find them all. I wasn't paying attention to chat because chat wasn't working most of the stream. So as I'm wrapping up, let me look at the chat. Who came on? And uh, yeah, who? Wow. You are really late for a flip. You totally, like, missed it. Yeah, I am just, uh... Totally un... Not looking at the chat because it wasn't there. Yeah, I can't read small letters, actually. Head magnifiers. Yep. Uh, you were right. Yep, I noticed you just before I called it for the end. Uh, oh wait, here. There's there's a view of not all of them. It's very close to all of them. But since you asked, since you asked, uh, the paints have not been put away in weeks and so they've just been piling up here and what i mean by putting away is over here there is this custom made paint putter wayer thing uh, lexi did this on her 3d printers these are old spools from pla 
And then these inserts, you can see they're done in two halves. These inserts are custom made with openings that are just the right size for the uh, Viejo bottles like that. And um, there is an opening for each one of the Viejo bottles that uh, are there. And then there's another one. You know, I get this rambled over enough now. Now I've just really messed it up. There we are. There's another one over here. A bigger one. Those are bigger holes that hold the Tamiya bottles. Those are all sorts of minis that have been painted over time. But there, there, there's uh, like just in the last two weeks, um, all of those have been used at least once. Maybe, yeah, unlike the imps and things. So it would be good. It would be good um, for me to put them away instead of letting them all sit there getting in the way, basically becoming a thing to be just knocked over. But sorry, I, uh, yeah, I was just, I don't know, trying to get this centaur painted. And as you can see, it, it did not go well. There's just that ivory paint is just everywhere. But, who? okay, I still have like two minutes left. Two minutes left, and um, because there's so much stuff here, I'm, I'm gonna flip this little piece of balsa wood because it's least likely to hurt something. Okay, two dots and a plane. Three to one, three to one, four to one, five to one, definitely didn't follow the 50-50 random rule here on those flips. But I'm, I'm glad who you, that you joined in and asked for a flip, and Leuven, I really appreciate you checking in. Uh, Submarine Wednesday. Don't miss it. I am going to continue the process of filing and sanding those missile tubes so that they're ready to prime. And um, I might paint the inside of the hull of the missile room. I need to do that. It gets painted, I think, light blue. It's going to need a couple of coats. It's uh, a paint that goes on either thick or thin. And there, the wall is behind the missile, the missile tubes. So I'll be sanding, filing and sanding missile tubes. Maybe I'll get brave and... Gravity again. Maybe I'll get brave and attempt to glue together the missile tube with, that shoots a little missile with a spring in it. That'll be Wednesday. On Friday, I'm coming back to these guys. This one is... What is that? Just, I'm just going to let that go. Maybe I'll touch it up with a little red paint. There's a little shiny spot there that you couldn't see. I'm going to use the speed paint on this guy and then finish the base. This one will be done Friday. Okay. This one, um, this one's a little more challenging. I need to put a second coat of the ivory on and then touch up everything and then uh, speed paint it. But that'll be that'll be a little bit later. So I'll probably, on Friday, I'll start by second coating this one so that has a chance to dry. And then um, speed paint this one and then paint the base of this one and then come back and speed paint this one. That's the plan for Friday. But the plan for Wednesday is to continue working on the missile room and I've got the bulkheads painted. I'm working on the missile tubes. They're going to get ready for priming. I need to make some sort of stand for them. I don't think I'll do that on the stream because it involves a power drill drilling 16 holes to put dowels in board to hold the missile tubes so that they can be painted. Yeah, that. Uh, and I'll continue to try to get the warp out of one of those decks by just holding it and bending it while I'm talking. 
Well, who? Thank you, thank you for uh, congratulating me on my rambling. Um, you know, I tried, but yeah. And thanks, Leuven. I did, I did progress today. This this one is looking okay, and it's uh, just down to uh, putting the speed paint wash on the centaur's humanoid part. And I would have done that earlier. Uh, I tried the speed paint, but it against the gray primer it just didn't work at all so that's why this color had to go on yeah, we'll see how it turns out this one's a lot more challenging and we'll see how that turns out but join us all people in the chat and me for relaxing painting at submarine wednesday be again working on that i'll explain once again during the stream what i'm doing and why with that if you can uh yeah, check out our Dungeons & Dragons stream with live chat three Sundays a month. And you can catch all of the old episodes on YouTube or as a podcast. So please do that. They're really, really cool. Have fun on your lunch walk. Yep. And uh, become a follower. Become a sponsor. Go to uh, patreon.com slash Dyson Dungeons to become a patron. Yeah. There, there's a lot of catching up to do. There's like a hundred episodes. So you might, you know, you can like zip over the breaks and things like that. But uh, yeah, please do. Because I think our campaign is hilariously wonderful. It's a lot of fun. But I'll see you on Wednesday and Friday from 10 until 2. Take care. See you then. Bye.